But freedom is the answer. Bringing people together, I, am, uh, I, I feel so emphatically positive about the benefits of liberty. And I don't, I don't uh, shy away ever from somebody saying, yes, I don't care about people because it's only the free society that cares about people. And that is what we have to convince people of. And the magnificent thing about a free society, it's, it's not judgmental. Yes, on a personal basis, you can judge your own life, your, your life of your kids and your family, and you may be uh, judgmental in the sense that you know what right and wrong, but it's not judgmental in the sense that we want to write laws and decide how you should spend your money and what you should eat and whether or not you can drink raw milk or not. We shouldn't do that. But I'm convinced that it brings people together. I'm convinced that uh, this philosophy brings together those who claim they're progressives and those who consider themselves moderates and those who consider them conservatives and libertarians because they all have bits and pieces of the freedom ideas. And there's no reason why we can't work with people on those issues that, in which we agree. And this, this is a way that people feel less threatened and will come together. And I claim that I have worked as well with any other group in, in Washington as anybody, instead of being stereotyped and say I'm a right wing conservative and I don't talk to others uh, on the progressive side. Because you get a lot of support from progressives who are sick and tired of Obama's constant wars and his attack on civil liberties. But in a, in a history of freedom, it's a rather young philosophy. Authoritarianism is how the world has lived most of, uh, most of all history. And that is people wanting to run other people's lives, having dictators and czars and kings and all these uh, authoritarians that want to tell us what to do. But this, we did have a good start. We didn't have a perfect constitution, a lot of shortcomings there, but it was good compared to others. And it introduced us into an age where we, re we recognize private properties and sound money and contracts and self-reliance and not a welfare state and not uh, a, a world empire. So we had this test and we became the most prosperous nation in the history of the world. We're still very wealthy, but our problem is, is we destroyed our production we got careless about understanding what liberty was all about, and now our prosperity, prosperity is very, very fragile because we've destroyed the foundation, and it's not going to take a whole lot to push the whole house down because the foundation is gone. We need to restore the principles of liberty. When we became prosperous, people became in, infatuated with the materialism and thought, well, materialism is wonderful, it's perpetual, and all we need is a government to help redistribute it, and we forgot all about defending the principles that produce the wealth. But now we are being pushed, and if we think that we can do this by spending and deficits and printing money and not address the subject of repairing the foundation, we're kidding ourselves. We have this opportunity. We have the people now coming with us, and right now the evidence is so clear that it is failing. Government is failing around the world. The only question is, what is it going to be replaced with? Are we going to go backwards? and get dictatorial powers, or are we going to continue the process that we had a taste of and we've allowed to be, to be slipping away from us? Can we restore that and get the people encouraged enough to say, let's use the remaining freedoms we have to defend our liberties and promote this great country of ours once again? Thank you very much. <laughs>